What's up, everybody? It's Charlie, and I'm back. So a couple of days ago, I was talking to one of my friends, and they mentioned that they were somewhat interested in getting top surgery. And they voiced that they wanted this surgery, but they had a bunch of concerns and questions and wasn't sure if they were able would be able to get surgery if they weren't on testosterone or... Um, fully like confident in their gender identity or like different things like that and it made me realize that my journey to top surgery was a little bit atypical and it didn't follow the path of a lot of people so i thought that in this video i'd talk about really what happened to me leading up to top surgery why I wanted it, and kind of what that journey looked like for me, in the hopes that it'll help some of you who have some of those same questions or are looking for a different path to get to that same result. So let's get started. So the journey to me getting top surgery started in 2015. Um, I was just a little lesbian who liked having a flat chest. Um, that was the year that I discovered binders and it really set off a whole new life for me. Um, I was more confident, more um, myself, and more just like free and open in the world. Um, I liked how clothes fit me with binders on and it really just was a life-changing experience for me, truly. Like I said before, I identified as a lesbian and I knew that boobs weren't like the be-all and end-all of my femininity. Um, I knew that I could be whoever I wanted to be as a person and still have a flat chest. And so that's what I did. I walked around with the flat chest. I found pretty much every day, 24 seven. Um, I take it off to sleep and that was pretty much it. I just really, really liked that feeling. It wasn't until 2016, the next year, that I got serious about what if I made this more permanent. Binding was getting really uncomfortable. As you know, it can make you sore and like is not the most great feeling. It's really restrictive. Summer came around and I wore my binder, but I realized how just difficult it is in this Georgia heat to wear a binder and feel safe and be able to breathe and like not pass out from heat stroke and like all of those just minor annoyances and inconveniences that added up into major problems and major like anxiety around wearing my binder every day, even though it was something that brought me so much joy and gender euphoria, or just euphoria in general. I feel like at the time, I didn't process it as gender euphoria or put it into these transgender terms. For me, it was just, this is what makes me feel better. And I chose to pursue that feeling. Um, for me, I, like I said, thought about it and realized that I wanted to move forward to making it a permanent part of my life. Um, I saw trans people who got top surgery and knew people who had gotten like breast surgeries of like making them bigger or, or making them smaller, different things like that. So I didn't see any problem with me moving forward to just have mine taken off completely. Uh, it was also around the time, if I remember correctly, around the time when Angelina Jolie got her uh, boobs removed. And I knew that like, this is just something that women can do. This is just something that people can do no matter what their gender is. So why can it not be me? So it was me. <laughs> um, I went, um, from there to find a surgeon. At the time, like I said, I wasn't focused on the transgender community, so I went to a regular old plastic surgeon. They didn't require me to have any like trans identifying letters or um, be on hormones or really anything at all. Um, he treated it like a regular plastic surgery. Um, someone comes in and asks for something and you give that person what they want. I got kind of lucky that 
I had the opportunity and I had the resources to do the research I needed to make sure that he was a doctor that could meet my needs and to figure out like I had to figure out for myself kind of like what surgeries I wanted and what additions I wanted. Did I want nipple grafts? Did I not? And I've made a video about like some of the questions that I had about that. And I'll actually link to that video in the in the comment. I mean, not in the comments, in the um, description below. Uh, but for me, I did all of that research myself and I brought that research to my doctor and he said, okay, I can do this. And we went from there. Um, I think I did have concerns around paying for it because I did not use insurance. Like I said, that's another thing about me not pursuing this surgery as part of the transgender community. I didn't expect it to be covered by insurance. And so I had to get loans to get it paid for. And I thankfully have paid off those loans now, but it was a big financial decision for me to do this thing. But I knew the gender euphoria and the euphoria that I got from having a flat chest. And so I knew that it was worth it for me to be happy all the time and to not have to wake up and have any moment where I'm like, ah, oh, crap, that's what I look like or that's what I got. Um, for me to just always be able to throw on a shirt and be like, yeah, that's yeah, this is a good feeling. Um, I know that if I had pursued this surgery as a transgender person and as part of the trans community at that time, that I would have had to get letters of recommendation and some of the like trans specific surgeons require you to have um, mental health letters and be on hormones for a certain amount of time and have all of these things that kind of ensure that you're trans enough or like these gatekeeping things that they put up in your way. For me, um, pursuing it as just a cis woman at the time, I didn't have those obstacles. And I kind of am glad that I didn't because they would have been a really big detriment to me moving forward and something that made me happy and that helped me to figure out that I am trans because it wasn't until after I had the surgery that I was able to look at myself and be like oh, okay with that stripped away who am I what do I look like um I what do I like about that and I found there were so many things that I liked about that and those things at the time didn't necessarily mean I was trans, but they helped me to understand that I could be and that the average person doesn't think about getting their boobs removed. Um, but I did, and that meant something. Um, to me personally, it meant, it pointed me towards my non-binary identity and helped me to feel more at home in that identity um, once I figured it out. So, yeah, it's overall been a really good thing for me. Um, I don't regret anything about it. And that's something that I said going into it to start out with that whether I was trans or not, whether no matter what it meant for me or didn't mean for me, I was willing to live with the consequences of what I was doing. Um, that I would never regret it um, because it's a choice that I made for myself and it was something that I chose to make me happy and there's nothing I can ever regret for choosing something for myself. So that was good, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Um, if you guys have any more questions about this topic or have anything specific that you want to talk about and you want me to talk about in terms of like why I chose top surgery or how it was a good fit for me or like how I got things lined up with finances or anything like that. Um, I'd love to talk more about this, but I think that's all I have for now and I'll see you guys next time. Deuce.